What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another informative style video again. This time over what I believe strongly and the science supports this is the most important factor. The number one thing, there's lots of things, but on the top, in the pyramid of importance, it's at the top, right? For growth, which means not only for just plant growth from small to big, you know, through veg, but also for yield, large harvest, fat colas, big buds, all of that good stuff, right? And that's probably gotta be the most Googled and YouTubed ever, right? That, that's what everyone looks at, especially when you're first getting into it. How do I increase my harvest? How do I increase my yield? Or if you're like me, how do I get fat buds? How do I get dense buds, right? That, like, that was my most common search, especially when I first got into it. And that's actually how I started watching growers on YouTube in the first place. You know, reading through forums, going through Google, all kinds. There was very limited knowledge 12 years ago. And then I started following High Grow Hybrid. I've mentioned the name before on the channels. If you guys know who he is, he is, let me get my seat right. He uh, was growing, or he still grows. I still watch his stuff from time to time. He grows in a room, same room, what you see all the time, pulls about seven to 10 pounds off that room. Uh, doesn't run CO2, or he did it then. I still think he does not though. And seven to 10 pounds, and I, it was blowing my mind because I was just trying to get one pound was my goal, and I was lucky if I got, you know, I was three to five ounces, right? He was running DWC, and that's what got me into DWC. So, to get into it, keep myself on track here as much as possible, the number one thing for yield, everything, and I'm gonna explain why it's the number one thing. Fat buds, growth, If you so if you've been lacking, trying to grow, and it's just, it just not there, right? You're like, I got, you know, I get pretty decent quality, it could be a little bit better, but my yield is not there, and you're pulling like an ounce or two, or maybe even three off total, or even off a plant or two, and you're like, man, I just can't figure it out, I can't figure it out. And if you're anything like me back in the day, I would, f I would focus on the wrong things. I would focus on, well this was, you know, almost, you know, 10 years ago now, so blurple lights were big, and they got really nitpicky on spectrum. I remember spending days, 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 like, all added up, it was probably a week straight of just like all day long, all day long. You know, if you were to just take seven hours, just whatever, how many hours in seven days, that's how much time I would spend reading countless articles, all of what the different lighting, and, that, and I, I finally landed on certain blurple lights. Come to find out, most of it was fluff and it was all marketing back then anyhow, which is why full spectrum lights are the way to go. That's also why back in the day, everybody always pushed HID because they they'd never pushed the other ones. Was be, and I'll explain that as well, it's the same reasoning. Uh, and that is intensity, light intensity, or more specifically, PPFD. That is the biggest contributing factor to yield, to bud size, to overall growth. And if you've had a struggle with this, with growth, with yield, chances are you don't track PPFD. That's why a lot of times you'll hear me mentioning, and I did a video on different monitor, you know, meters, is to track PPFD. Not just going off a chart or something the company says, but actually knowing the numbers. So, you may, if you got money to spend and you don't mind spending it, you from anywhere from like the low end of 300 to the high end of 600 is quantum sensors. Like a, a spot on or Apogee, those are A1, hands down, that's the best of the best, 100% accuracy, that's what you'd wanna get. Make sure it falls within the nanometer range uh, you know, because some are only like four to seven, and you may have like, ma make sure it gets the range of the spectrum of the light you got is all I'm trying to say. But if you don't want to spend that much, or like I didn't want to spend that much, that's why I use the little Lux meter, Uni, it's Uni T383BT. BT is Bluetooth. What it is, is the little red meter I've shown you guys multiple times. It Bluetooths to your phone to an app. Uh, Migro, Migro, I'm not trying to say his name. He's a engineer, he's worked for the company for a few years, he's got up to 98% accuracy. And what he was able to do with them is it goes, it takes the Lux to your phone, converts it to PPFD. You enter in the type of light you have, so that way it gives you an accurate, accurate conversion, up to 98% accurate, which is extremely accurate, right? So it's not perfect, you, you know, you're gonna have to spend extra money for that, but it's really, really close, and it gives you within the ballpark, shit, 
It gets you within like the first two bases. Forget the ballpark. You're, you know what I mean. It gets you close to the home plate. Like so, you're there. You're, it's, it's very, it's very close. It's I much more ideal than having nothing at all, without a doubt. Because if you're having yield issues, and you don't want your PPFD with. Start there. Because that's the energy. That's the energy that goes to your plant. PPFD, photosynthetic uh, photon flux density, I believe is the acronym. And that's what you're measuring at your plant, which is micromoles per meter square. Micromoles is just a fancy way of saying really small numbers, right? And uh, you know that's and you might hear par also. Par is like what your light is. Par is what's being released. PPFD is the measurement of what's being released. Par is photos photosynthetic active radiation, I believe. Correct me on that. If I'm wrong, you can Google it. But so PPFD is what you're measuring basically. They're interchangeable. It doesn't matter as long as you're measuring your light. That's the important thing here. Now, if your yield's small and you're like, I don't know, whether you go with CO2 or not CO2, this shouldn't make a difference. Lighting is the energy. It takes those photons, takes the carbon out of the air, CO2, you know, nitrogen or everything else from the you know, from the soil, creates biomass, right? It creates the stems, the leaves, the calyx. It creates trichomes. It needs that energy to make resin and everything. So when you hear people saying uh, too much PPFD is you're gonna have quantity, not quality. You're gonna have fat yields, but low quality. For the most part, that's that's bullshit, man. Quality is highly dependent on genetics and lack of stress, right? So if you have genetics that can have good quality and you're not getting good quality, that's something you're now doing. So maybe you're putting so much light, you're stressing it out, that's different, right? That's because you are now inducing stress, reducing its ability to be the best it can be, right? Too much of a good thing is bad. Vitamin C is good, keeps you from being sick. Take a bunch of vitamin C, you can have some problems. Like it will make you sick, and not in a good way. I think kidney stones, it, it's bad, right? Too much of anything is a bad thing, right? You need sun to create vitamin D in your skin, that also helps immune, immune system, hormone functions. Too much sunlight gets you sunburned, right? So like if you just say high PPFT is bad, that's taken out of context. You need you need more to know, you know, you need to know what's going on. Like, I don't like high PPFD. It's like, well, I don't like your opinion. That's fine. You know what I mean? And now when you're doing this, and if you've had issues in the past, and you've watched my grow, other people's grow, whatever it is, another big uh, thing that you're doing is uh, you'll do what I did. You'll mimic somebody else. You'll try to copy exactly what somebody else does. So if you're watching this video, you probably watched some of my other videos, and maybe you see me push really high PPFD. Don't do exactly what I'm doing, all right? So that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say monkey see, monkey do, do what I'm doing, my way is the best way. No, 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 no. Do what works for your individual grow, right? So me, I'm, I'm pushing high CO2. I run high PPFD uh, up to like 14, 1500, which is really high, but I'm also cranking CO2. I have really good fertigation. I have high EC. I'm at like 2000, 2200 PPF, or PPMs of CO2, three to 3.5 EC. Like there's a lot of things I'm doing and I can only run that for a very short time and then I start to bring it down, right? And that's when another thing you don't want to do that other people do is if they go up and come down with their PPFD, that's because usually they're in such a high amount that as, as the plant gets later into flower, it doesn't need as much. The growth does slow down. Biomass from stems, leaves and stuff slow down and it really just goes into buds, which isn't as much biomass and you know, producing resin, uh, trichomes, all that. It doesn't require as much energy. So if you're you know, redlining it up here or very close to, you want to bring it down as the plant needs, as the plant slows down. Now, if you're down here at 600, 800 PPFD, 900, whatever it is, you might not want to go down. There's not much to go down to, right? So that's what I'm saying. If you can't just pick somebody else's method and it worked for your method. So you need to tra track your PPFD using a meter, right? There's links for all the meters in the description from Amazon, get, get one, get none. I would highly recommend getting at least the $40 one, man, come on. Measure it, see where you're at. Now, if you see, if you check your PPFD and you're like, but I'm running really high and I'm still not getting it, that's when you start falling down to your other factors, right? You're like, okay, I'm hitting, let's just say you're hitting 900 PPFD without CO2 in your tank, right? You're like, why why my butt still aren't big? Then you start going, you have to kind of have to troubleshoot at that point. And that's where being a grower comes in and you're just not doing things, right? Okay, what's next? Environmental factors, temp humidity. VPD chart, follow it. They're really helpful. I know a lot of people who like have their temps on point and their humidity would just be crazy. And they're running like a 1.5, 1.8 on the VPD chart. Like that's too dry, you're stretching your plants out. 
And if you're gonna, you know, and then if you're pushing PPFD, do, do well with your, your environment, obviously, and make sure that you're giving enough nutrients to support it as well. Now, if you're pushing PPFD and you're seeing stress, pull it down, right? Because those are gonna, that's gonna start affecting your quality. They're, you know, those stress factors affect quality. You can run PPFD pretty damn high, have no impact on quality, and you can have the best, best of both worlds. You can have large yields and have quality. How do you think all these you know, great commercial growers or great people who are like craft growers, and you know, see them on Instagram, and they're just growing fire. They're growing, they're getting good yields, otherwise they wouldn't be able to do it for a business. They may love this as a hobby, they may, love, they may be very passionate about growing, but at the end of the day, they still have to make a living to pay bills, feed their family, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, they, they're not gonna sacrifice quality for it, or at least most won't, the good ones. But you know what I mean, they still have to, they have to know how to do it right. So you got your PPFD, you got your, you know, your environment conditions. Down here, you're gonna have like your nutrient and your fertigation scheduling, right? You, you know, overwatering, underwatering, things like that. You wanna have the right, air, you know, water air ratio, all that. So it all trickles down, all things do matter. The point of this video is saying the number one thing, is no one seems to mention that, they're always like, here's the best nutrients for yield. Here's this, it's like, eh, get well-balanced nutrient, you're good. Lighting, 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 lighting. So I know a lot of people who are running lights, and I'm like, what, what, what is it? And they don't know, or I'm like, okay, what's the wattage? And they're, they're running a four by four space with like 300 watts. It's like, man, you better have those at 100%, assuming those are good quality lights. Like, you, you know what I mean? You, you gotta know these things, my guys. Like, that, that's the best way of doing it. Without knowing it, you know, knowledge is power, right? Even in growing, you need to know your numbers. And then if you're growing the same strain, now that, because you have these numbers and any good grower should be tracking their data, you know when, what light's too much, what's not enough. You know, when you get here, you start having nutrient deficiency issues. You're like, okay, I either don't go that high on PPFD or I up my EC. That's, you know, that's how you approach it. And each time you get a little bit better and then you learn how to grow and you can like, if red line is 10, where you start to enter stress, you want to hit a nine. And the more you know, you know how to put all the factors up to get that. So I don't want to ramble on, I had a couple side tangents there, but the moral of the story is, the number one most important thing is you're gonna be your light intensity, your PPFD, and you should measure it. And if you could take anything away aside from that, it is don't copy what somebody else is doing. Only watch other people's content, mine included, to learn information that you can take those tidbits of information and use within your growth. Don't use it, only use what applies, right? Don't try to put a square peg in a round hole kind of thing. You know what I mean? Because you can't, you're not gonna be 100% identical to their situation. You don't have their exact, like unless you can clone their entire environment, what they're doing doesn't match with what you're doing, no matter how great the grower is or how bad the grower is. It doesn't matter, right? You, you just have to like, okay, I know that this is important. How can I make this work in my growth? And, that, you know, and that's how you learn, just take that information. Because there's some great growers that don't do things that maybe I don't agree with, and they can be doing way better than me. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. It's like you need to do what works for you, right? Because in my situation, it doesn't work as good as their situation. So you got, you got to keep that in mind, right? It's all very situational. We all got our own styles, and we have our own environments, most importantly. And it's impossible to mimic someone's style, which basically is geared off of their environment. But I'm going to end it here. I'm starting to ramble too much. I. Uh, Made some need, by the way. Not bad. For first time in a couple years. But uh, I'm going to end it. So peace out, YouTube. As always, guys, happy growing. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.